Okay, now coming to mission 17, um, as you probably know, this mission is a boss fight only mission where we'll fight Eurasen in like his third form and final form. Since this mission is just a boss fight, um, if I just go in and well kick his ass, <laughs> uh, this video will be like, I don't know, three minutes long. Uh, so to sort of just have a little bit of something to talk about, uh, I suppose I'm going to take a detour. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to focus on first explaining like the, uh, I think the total of like three phases that he has throughout the fight. Sort of uh, point out a few attacks that is particularly like dangerous or something noteworthy. And then I'm going to come back and restart the mission and then I'm going to do my like my first legit fight against Urizen. And then, like for the third time, go in again and then I will show you like the actual efficient method to defeat Urizen in this mission. For the first part, we're just going to jump right in and sort of fool around and sort of observe what Urizen is going to do and I guess I'll try to well explain a few things along the way. So let's start. Just don't worry about the uh, weapon loadouts and everything. Anyways, uh, now starting off, as you can see, he's going to do this little like, power pose. And then he's going to do a blast wave. Which knocks you out, but doesn't do any damage, so... If you don't really know anything about boss fight, that's like not going to hurt you. So don't really have to worry about that yet. Anyways, uh, as you can see, in this like first phase, he's basically doing a lot of attacks that he already was doing in like the previous fights. However, what's different is, as you can see, there is no crystal blocking the way, so you can just go in and hack away. And secondly, he is doing a lot of like melee attacks. Now, let's uh, let's break it down. First of all, he's going to do this like a punch and a kick. That's one of the two hit combos, and he'll do a lot of, like well that that too. Ouch. And then if you send at like his back, he will do like the sweep, the backhand swipe that he just did a moment ago. So yeah, in phase one he has in total of like oh as you can see, uh, that kick is like his uh, second two hit attack. It's a two hit attack variant. But anyways, um, that's about it for first phase. Now against like these kicks and punches, uh, usually what I like to do is to just. Once again, use the convenient jump guard to uh, hopefully get some DT and still stay safe. Oh, he's timing? That's okay. Like, as long as you get at least like one perfect block out of the two, you still have like a net gain of DT, so. Don't have to worry about like being perfect. But anyways, uh, let's hack away. Otherwise, we'll never get to phase two. So, the other thing you can do, like up close, is to just use Mustang, as you can see, and just some like enemy step to uh, basically stay afloat at about like head height of yours. Oh, and also yeah, a uh, unique mechanic in this fight, once again, similar to the previous Urizen fights, is that once you deal with enough damage, you will stun him for a little bit, so he will like down to his knees, like what happened just now, which is. The, uh, the timing where you would be able to do some more like heavy hitting attacks like heat up your real impact and all that good stuff. In the meanwhile, um, while he's knocked down, you can also use the bite to do some well, kind of heavy hitting attacks if you can well, hit him. Sometimes like, oh there we go. Sometimes he goes up and down so it's a bit hard to land the bite. Once he's down, you can well, do whatever you want or something like this. Anyway, so once he's down to like two thirds of health, he will go dash away, I mean teleport away. And once again do his little pose and blast wave, and then we'll enter phase two. Now, in phase two, he has a few more attacks, in particular, well, as you can see, the time bubble, once again. And then he will also use these like summon swords. Now, a thing to note about the summon swords that is really helpful is that destroying them actually gives you a lot of DT. If you notice uh, my DT bar, take a look. 
shooting these summon swords gives you a lot of DP outright, as you can see. So, a good thing they can do in this phase, oh, mind the fireball, is that to, uh, oh, if you destroy those summon swords and get a lot of DP, you can basically stay in Devil Trigger for quite a long while. So, basically, you have a very high damage output in phase 2 compared to phase 1, if you remember well to use your DT and destroy those summon swords in the meanwhile. So, just pop your Devil Trigger like nobody's business and... When you don't have enough DT, just wait for the summon swords to come out and then just pop them with your little like pistol shots. That's actually the most convenient way to do it, I think. There we go. Once again, he's down, so... Get down to the ground and hit up for the real impact. There we go. Now, once he's down to less than one third of health, once again, he'll do the blast wave and phase change into phase three. And if you hit him just a little bit more, I think. Hold on. Oh, there we go. Once you hit him a little bit more, down to like, I guess, a quarter? Or maybe one fifth, he'll enter DT. Which at this point, well, he's incredibly tough. Anyways, uh, let's talk about phase 3. Uh, as you can see, he will summon the two lasers. And he will get, I think, significantly more like punches and, and that too. Like a dash punch. And of course, he'll do like the uh, ultimate attack in a minute. Oh, there we go. Ouch. And he got hit. As you can see, it deals a ton of damage. So let's talk a bit about that ultimate attack and how to dodge it. Now, of course, the most like straight, I mean, the most simple way that everyone knows is to just walk away. <laughs> to just dash like hell. Now, this actually does work, as you can see. I'm not going to shame you on running away or anything. Uh, this does work. However, I would argue that there are a bit more stylish ways <laughs> To handle this, so let's take a look at what I have found. Now, first of all, one way that I found is to do this: to Mustang into his punches. As you can see, um, given well a slight practice of timing, you can basically dash into Urizen and then like jump up every time he goes in for the punch or the spike, for that matter, uh, and that can solve the problem pretty well. Ouch. Anyways, uh, let's see. Oh, there he goes. Let's try that again. Oh. It may not be uh, very clear visually, because well, there was a lot of effects going on. But basically, I dash into Urizen every time he does the punch. So, ouch. Anyways, uh, th there's that. Now, a second way a arguably safer way, but a bit more costly way, is to simply stand still and just roll guard. Just standing there and block him. As you can see, uh, it takes about, I think, a little less than 2 bars of DT. And as long as you have 2 bars of DT, or more, you will be fine. But anyways, uh, I think that's about it. I can really speaking like people usually like to talk about how the bike could also work, which is true, but if you don't use Mustang and just use like double jump and the bike, I don't think it's particularly safe. Like you would have to like use Devil Trigger to pop it and go even higher with the uh, the third jump and the glide. That would work, but that also uses DT, so at that point I would argue that it, you might as well just stand there and block it. <laughs> With all that said, uh, oh, one last thing. Um, now, as you can see, uh, Urizen gets significantly like tougher once you enter DT. Your attacks barely do any damage. However, um, the good thing is that you don't actually have to like chip away the entire health bar from this point. All you have to do um, is to get him right to around, hold on, I think around this point of health. At this point, 
you can just use your Sin Devil Tracker that you have well, stored and saved up, hopefully. And you can just use Demolition twice. And that should do the job. There we go. As you can see, uh, that was like just enough to take care of it. And that's how we're going to well do this in our first run. And hopefully you understand like what's happening. And let's well get right to it. Okay, now as mentioned, um, we're gonna go through this fight again, and this time around, <laughs> I'm going to actually like focus on fighting him. So we're gonna go through the boss fight again, go through each of his phases, and hopefully I can show you like a proper way to handle each situation. So let's go ahead. Okay, so first of all, he's going to uh, do his little pose and try to do the blast wave. So while he's well winding up, what I like to do usually is to get off some good damage right away with a real impact. Ooh. There we go. And then, uh, oh, usually what I like to do is to just go up to his head and enemy step a little bit. Get off some summon swords, round trips. And sometimes we can come down for some DT with uh, jump guarding. Oh, he's running away. Ooh, there we go. And let's see if I can down. There we go. Let's just down. Really back time. Oh, by the way, uh, remember, remember that, like, against big bosses like this, you can actually, like, enemy step to uh, cancel the, the cooldown from, like, the end of the real impact when you're, like, up in the air. So you can sort of get off, like, a second real impact a little faster that way. And place. There we go. Oh. Oh, and comes the second phase. Oh, usually what I like to do is just just dash away first. Like when the uh, time bubble is still active, I wouldn't want to risk this. Anyways, uh, against the second wave of summon swords, start spamming your pistol. There we go. There we go. And then use the uh, extra DT that we got. Oh. But do mind the uh, that. Five. Ooh. Oh, and there comes the second time bubble. So let's dash away just to be safe. There we go. Let's see if I can. Ouch. Got chipped a little bit. That's fine. There we go. And he's done. This means really impact and enemy step to cancel the lag. I mean the cooldown. Oh, and he's running away, which means we are getting third phase once again. Just do some real impacts as much as possible. Ooh. And I think oh, he has ended DT. Yes, he did. So starting from here, just try to be safe. Run away if you are not sure about what he's doing. <laughs> like that. Should have run away. My bad. Oh. And just hold that lock. That's okay. We have some DD to spare. Oh. Actually, yeah. I would advise against using the bike at third base, actually. Come on, it. Since his hunters are like quite quick, and you don't know when and what he's going to do, oh. better not use like attacks that are very long, animations and whatnot. So just... Ouch! Wow! <laughs> Look at that! Like that came out of nowhere. Anyways, um, 
think it's gonna. Yep. It's okay. That. And yep, it's gonna get away again. Just gonna summon lasers. Yep. It's okay. Just uh, turn it on a little bit. Get away. Get no sure. Oh. Oh, and I think, yep. Get that block. That's fine. We'll save up our DT just for that. Oh, oh. Gotta watch out for that. Oh. 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 <laughs> that was close, actually. I was out of uh, jumps. Oh. It's okay. Hold that block. Actually, <laughs> might as well give him that. And I think we're done. Alright. There we go. That's one, and that's two. Excellent. They're brothers. Well, Why are they fighting each other? There we go. To see one's justice through. And that's how we deal with Urizen, the normal way. And now we're going to, well, once again get back into the start of the mission, and I'm going to talk a bit about a much more efficient way to uh, sort of handle the boss fight. Okay, once again, we're back to the start of the mission. Uh, but before getting in, this time around, I would actually like to uh, sit here and just talk a little bit about the strategy that I'm going to use coming up. Now, you probably know, but... Uh, in STT, in Sin Devil Trigger, there's a skill called Sin Inferno, where, well, you slam the ground, basically the same input as Handbreaker. Now, Sin Inferno is, I think, one of the highest stun damage attacks that there are in this game. And in the context of this fight, landing two Sin Infernos on Urizen will stun him and, well, knock him down on his knees. Anyways, the point is that if you can utilize Quadruple S, you can actually trap Urizen in a stun loop. But of course, as I've mentioned multiple times throughout this video series, uh, I do not consider Quadruple S on its own a very beginner-friendly skill. So you may be wondering why am I mentioning this right now? Now that's because um, in this fight in particular, there's actually a very easy way to reach Quadruple S that even, well, beginners or casuals can do, in my opinion. Now, as you can see, um, in any of its, like, base-changing blast waves, if you could land the perfect roll guard on, like, the first hit, you can spam the button and gain an insane amount of DT and style rank. So, as you can see here, a jump guard and then repeatedly spamming the guard button will basically give you a full DT bar. Now, if you couldn't get the timing down, like using jump guard and whatnot, you could also simply activate your devil trigger, which in your devil form, Dante cannot be locked down by the blast wave, so you could basically guarantee the perfect block once the blast wave like starts. Or, you can use Ice Age, which also guarantees a perfect block. So, um, with all of that explanation done, now I'll actually like demonstrate and show you how it is done. Now, as you can see, um, we have changed our weapon loadout a little bit. We no longer need the uh, Devil Sword Dante, nor the bike, really. All we need is King Cerberus for the Ice Age, for an easy perfect block. And Balrog for, well, real impact and is, well, high damage output. And the guns don't really matter, really. Like, 
if everything goes right and we keep Urizen in a stun lock state long enough, uh, we don't even have to like deal with phase two at all. Like we'll skip phase two entirely. Anyways, uh, let's jump right into it, and I'll show you how it is done. So, starting right up, get in, and just hold down that easy button. There we go. As you can see, free triple S and DT for your sin double trigger. And there we go. And if I can time it just right. Oh, no. That's fine. <laughs> Timing wrong. But that's okay. Oh, there we go. And let's see if I can actually. Oh. Wow. That's okay. There we go. You can run away, but you can still have enough time. There we go. Alright. And punch. And slam. And punch. And slam. As you can see, this is pretty broken. <laughs> you're basically, you're basically skipping the entire fight. Really. And at this point, we just, well, finish it. With demolition, and that's about it. As you can see, um, even though I missed the timing for the stun loop a couple of times, uh, this is still ridiculously easy. And there you go. No damage. Perfect S. And that's how you really deal with Urizen. After knowing this method, you probably won't ever fight Urizen the normal way ever again. <laughs> so, like, 90% of this video is basically pointless after this, but hey, play however you will and have some fun. Anyways, uh, I'll see you in the next mission.